everyone, it's Ali from Vintage Page Designs and today we're going to make a um, quick project. It's in a soft covered accordion book. Let me just open it up. See, it's an accordion book and inside are three signatures um, with this rose paper as their wrappers and it has all sorts of different um, scrapbook papers, plain sketchbook paper, and um, wallpaper, all sorts of different things. I think there's also um, some old sort of envelopes as well in there. So that is the project we'll be doing today. Um, the inspiration for this project came from a book I made last fall, which is this one. And um, I filled it with sort of memories of fall. You can see some of that, photographs. And um, quotes and tags and all sorts of vintage papers and some prints I had made. So um, that was, this is the inspiration. I plan to make a summer version. Um, so, um, and I sort of wrapped the spine with this piece of corrugated um, or a cardboard box actually. And I it sort of I did a lot of sewing in there so you can see all the threads. So that was the inspiration. Hopefully when this book is filled, um, it will look a little like this too, kind of bulging with all sorts of um, memories. But today we're just going to make the, the shell of the book. One other thing I want to show you before we start is, you can also make a hardcover version. This is a travel journal. And instead of the um, cardboard wrapper or the ribbon wrapper that I used this spine, I used some leather straps for this one. And included a leather closure as well but again this is also an accordion book you can see right there so um, let's get started okay so first we're going to make the signatures for our concertina book I'm going to make three signatures let me show you first of all without the wrappers all of the pages are six inches high including the outer wrappers. The pages are six, all six inches high. Some are a little narrower than four inches across. Um, I've included some sketchbook paper, an old envelope, um, and a few pieces of scrapbook paper. Um, most of them are eight inches and then four inches when folded. Um, but like I say, a few are a little bit shorter. There's a little window in there. So the key is when you're creating your signatures, they all need to be six inches high and the paper grain is to run parallel to the spine. I will link below to another video where I went into a lot more detail about creating signatures um, for handmade books. So we have our three signatures. I've put about six pair folios in each, so maybe between 10 and 12 pages per signature. Then I made a wrapper out of handmade paper. This is like a cream and rose paper. Um, again, six inches high. I made this slightly wider. I think the whole thing is um, eight and a half, so we have a quarter inch on either side, just to give us a little, <coughs> excuse me, margin. So you put the handmade wrapper around it, all three signatures, press them um, for a few hours and you should be good to go. Next, we will set those aside Oh, and one thing I wanted to mention, I um, I save all the scraps that are left over so that when the book is made I can maybe add in some um, little pockets or, or tags with the leftover paper. never want to waste anything. So this is some old wallpaper that I found which is kind of fun. It um, all sort of coordinates kind of nicely. Let's make the concertina section. This again is six inches high. Um, and this, I believe, is 12 and a half inches long. Um, you will need to adjust your measurements um, based on the size of the book you would like. Um, let's, we're going to fold this paper in half. So there's my centre fold. You can go back and score it if you would like to as well. You can see I've already done this, but I want to just show you. So you can score at the centre line. And then you're going to make two score lines to the right of the center line and two score lines to the left of the center line using your ruler. Now this is one inch wide. If you do not have a one inch wide ruler, 
you can make yourself a little jig from a piece of um, cardboard or just adjust your measurements say your ruler is one and a quarter inches wide just adjust the measurements adjust the length of this um, strip of paper so two score lines to the right of the center line and then two score lines to the left of the center line i use this metal um, triangle or, or a plastic one just to make sure that our score lines are at 90 degrees so that when you fold your accordion you don't get that kind of you know how it shifts like that when the, the lines aren't quite lined up so fold your accordion here's our center here's our so here's a valley in the center we've got a peak this side and then a, a valley fold right there hopefully you can see that and then our signatures are going to go one in all the valley folds so one two three like that and then the book is going to fold like that okay so now we're going to sew our signatures um grab a scrap of paper um three four inches wide doesn't really matter it's the height that counts it needs to be six inches high the same height as the um accordion strip and the signatures you want to mark the head with an H. We want to mark a little dot, the head of the um, the accordion piece, and then mark the head of all of the signatures. I usually just do it on the spine right there, um, or up in that corner. And then I'm going to mark in three places. I usually do this by folding and pressing and just finding the center and then measuring half inch from the top, half inch from the bottom. We're going to do a three hole pamphlet stitch. You could also do five holes. Say you did a larger book, eight inches or bigger, you would do a five hole pamphlet stitch. Um, but because it's six inches, um, three holes should be plenty. So I'm going to take your punching cradle or um, a thick catalogue. Make sure, here's the head of my book. Here's the head of my template. I want to put the template inside, grab a thin awl and punch my three holes, go straight down like that. and then repeat for the other two um, sets of signatures, hopefully you can see that. You can see this is a piece of wallpaper, it's got some kind of weird writing on it. Okay, set. so I did the other two signatures so they're all set and ready to go. And you want to grab your accordion strip. Here's my head up here on the left. We're going to punch holes in the three valley folds. So here, here, and here, not in the peaks. Three valley folds for the three signatures. So I'm just going to put the first valley fold into the punching cradle. My head is on the, the template is on the left. I'm going to gently punch my holes could do the signature and the accordion at the same time it's just a little cumbersome it's your choice skip the peak go down to the next valley fold this piece of um, dark pink paper I believe was May oh uh, no sorry August's paper club it's a dark pink floral it's nice and thick and we'll take um, Take a little bit of abuse with the folding of the spine. So now we have our sewing holes and all the accordions. We'll set these aside. Make sure our heads all match up and we're ready to sew. So you want to grab some coordinating thread. I'm just using a natural coloured thread. Um, it's pre-waxed and it's linen. I have a book binding needle. Thread this up. I just used an arm's length of thread if you want to be precise um, for the whole book you would cut maybe nine times the height of the book so nine times six inches which is 54 to be honest um, with a book like this I'm, I'm just going to use a big arm's length um, if it were a coptic or something and if you ran out of thread it would be the end of the world um, I, I would measure but for this I think you can just use an arm's length but if you're sort of short of thread or you feel like you only have a little bit left about um, eight to nine times 
the height of the book will be sufficient. Take your first signature, just double check, check that your um, heads are matched up so that your uh, punching holes are aligned. This um, stitch is super easy, I'm sure you've all done it before, but just to recap, um, we will start in the center. I just have to kind of wiggle because um, sometimes all the holes move. Wiggle to find the center hole, oops, like that. Um, I'm going to knot it in the middle, so I start in the middle. If I want to knot it on the outside and maybe add some beads, I would start on the outside of the center. So go through the um, stack of pages you have in the outer wrapper, then go through the center of the first um, valley fold, pull it through, give yourself a little tail to tie off, go up to the head of the book. I'm just going to have to turn it around so I can see and again you're going to have to maybe go through several at a time you might not be able to get the needle through all those um, pages because they shift like this little so-and-sos there we go oh, oh there we go I'm there so make sure that doesn't get too small pull through we're at the head of the book now I believe are we at the head yes head of the book and then you come down, you skip the center hole, go through the last hole at the tail of the book. Gosh, where is that hole? It's hard to see sometimes with um, the pattern paper. So let's just say, here's a quick tip. Say you're having a hard time finding that hole, one thing to do would be to line up the holes with your thin awl like this. So instead of creating new holes, which you really don't want to do, you can sort of line them all up and spear them on your um, awl like this, hold it steady and go through like that, rather than sort of wiggling and pushing and sometimes creating new holes um, in paper, which is really frustrating. So we start in the middle, came to the outside, we came to the top head of the book we came out we went to the end of the book the tail came out and we're going to finish by coming back through the center so pull it through that center hole and then um, have the long thread on one side and the short thread on the other tighten everything up just make sure there's no um, loose threads and then tie in a square knot and you're going to repeat this for the other two signatures in the other two valley folds make a square knot left over right right over left trim off a little bit and i would bone fold between after each sewing so i finished sewing on the other two signatures and sort of you can see how it looks from above the side and then the insides there's our wrappers and then in between you can see these sort of extra pieces and what's the reason I like the concertina book is because um, these folds here will help it expand so when I add lots of photos and tags and pockets stuff with all sorts of good things these extra spaces here will help the book expand and um, um, sort of not bulge open like that make it still sort of keep the integrity of the book so I decided on my two covers um, I went with the cream floral which is nice and thick and I made it's six inches high like the, everything else um, and I made three of the sides straight um, I know that the handmade paper comes with a really nice decal edge but for these edges it, it, it really ought to be straight I think um, otherwise particularly if you want it to go on a shelf or something if this lower edge were deckled it would get damaged um, and if this edge were deckled I also feel like it would it would get damaged um, but I kept this four edge um, as a decal and again it still may get a little abuse but um, it looks nice and um, you can just kind of be careful but I feel like if all 
if more than one of the decal edges uh, of the edges were deckled it just wouldn't be great for the book so and I cut them a little wider I cut them to four and a half wide so they sort of extend out beyond the book a little bit I have to decide how what I'm gonna bind around the spine now um I've got a few different ones to audition so you can sort of see my thought process let's just put these on for now like that so the first one I came up with was fabric I love fabric and I found this really nice kind of rough silk and I thought oh maybe with this sort of frayed edge I thought maybe we could either sew or glue this on the two covers and it would hold sort of the stop the accordion from completely opening up like that which is the point of this spine wrapper but I just didn't feel like the colour was quite right. I love the texture and um, I love the colour, but I just thought with the pink. Yeah, I like that um, colour. So we'll get rid of that one. Then I found some fun sort of candy stripe pieces. I thought, ooh, like two of those might be fun. So we could put like, cut in half and put one at the, one at the top and then one at the bottom. I'm so like, well, I'm just not sure that really goes with the type of book. It's kind of, you know, the rose petals and the, these florals. It's kind of elegant. And then I found this huge long brown piece of ribbon. I thought, oh, you know what we could do? We could use this whole piece and wrap it all the way around and use it as a tie. You'd have to be careful of this torn edge, but use it as a tie and I felt like the polka dots were a little much but we could flip it over and I kind of like that I like brown and pink together so that's a contender and I like the width so we could either glue it here and have a big band or we could actually glue it underneath the cover so sandwich it between the end sheet and the cover and sort of have a tie right here so I'm kind of liking that um, if I wanted to go more rustic, I was thinking about using this piece of canvas, but again, my book isn't that rustic, so um, I'm mixing that. So there's this one, but then I saw this pale pink satin ribbon, which I really kind of liked. And I feel like it goes well with the, um, the inside of the book, like the nice sort of wallpaper and the, um, the rose petals. So I'm thinking we'll use this um, either on the outside and have it as a tie. But what I think I'm going to do is actually put it between the covers like this. So a piece will show here and then a piece will extend beyond the covers and it can tie right here. So that is my plan. i just pull this. So having auditioned many different pieces of ribbon, I decided on this pale pink. Um, I'm just gonna cut a big piece, much bigger than I actually. So having auditioned many ribbons, I decided on this and pieces of fabric and so forth. I decided on this pale pink or sort of peachy colored ribbon. Um, I'm gonna just cut a big piece, more than I need, because I have a lot. Set that aside. And I've decided to attach it between the end sheets and the cover of the book. A scrap sheet paper here I have. Um, PVA, but I have it in a heavy bottomed glass jar, a big brush, and I'm going to cover this with glue, lay over the ribbon, add a little more glue, and then put my, my cover on. So, I'm going to start from the centre out. From the centre and move outwards in a star shape. Like this going in one direction. I'm not going back and forth. 
because that glue may then seep under to the inside of the book, which is not what we want. Now I'm using a fairly good layer of glue because this paper's textured, so we want to make sure it gets in all of the sort of little divots in the paper. I'm being pretty careful though near this edge because we don't want lots of glue to seep out, but we want enough, so sort of going slowly and carefully along that spine edge because it would make a mess. I'm going to lay down my ribbon, add a little bit more glue on top. I'm going to move fairly quickly. I'm going to pull out this sheet and throw it away. We don't want that. Make sure this is the front. Line it up. Because it's six inches high, let's go turn it this way. It's fairly easy to line up. Sorry if my head was in the way. Let's pull this ribbon. Grab your bone folder and then smooth it down. And then I'll probably open it up like this so that it's flat on the table and also smooth it down. So this end sheet and the cover sandwiches the ribbon. You could, however, just have it on the front if you wanted to. Okay. Now to put on the front. So we're gonna do the same thing, but I had a thought while I was doing that I may cut a window with a hole punch in here. So I could cut it in the center, I could do it by hand, but I think I'm gonna use a, um, a square punch. I'm gonna make it in the right hand corner. Okay, so it's gonna be tough. Oh, goodness me. There you go, I got it. So then this ribbon's gonna come over and then we'll just have like a little window here and I may put the title of the book in there. So let's just repeat the same procedure. Now I have finished gluing this second cover. I'm just gonna put a little glue on the ribbon. I am gonna press down the book, just pull this a little tighter. A little bit too much glue on the ribbon, but that's okay, it'll dry. I'm just gonna compress the book a little bit and then add my cover. Of course, I made a mistake here because I put glue all over the end sheet, <laughs> so we have a big gap there. I'm just gonna pull this, so I'm compressing it slightly. There we go. And we'll repeat what we did before, but we'll fold it down. So when I dry this, this wet piece here, I'll have to put a piece of deli paper or wax paper. Just make sure that it, before you completely smooth down the front cover, back whichever one you do to make sure everything um, is aligned before you go crazy with a boat folder. Mm -hmm.